But now that the dust is starting to settle on Halloween ends, let's rank this franchise. Let's get into it. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well out there. Now that the dust is kind of settling on Halloween ends, although people are still arguing online, I think it's time to rank this franchise with this new and latest entry. So let's get into this ranking. But before we do it, do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. Join me here at Great Would Appreciate That. Now, there's 14 films in the Halloween franchise now with Halloween ends. I'm including the Halloween 6 theatrical cut and the producer's cut. So that's why we have 14 instead of 13. And at number 14, if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, this should come as no surprise. In my opinion, the absolute worst entry in this franchise, and that would be Halloween Resurrection. Yes, for multiple reasons, not just Buster Rhymes, but he is a big part of why this movie is a huge raging dumpster fire. I don't think it's that well shot. I don't like the mask here, although it is better than H2O, which isn't saying much. The Buster Rhymes shit really drags this down, and the whole found footage aspect or them doing this webcam broadcast in the Myers house, it just doesn't really work. Um, and it's just a lot of poor choices here. So yeah, number 14, Halloween Resurrection. Number 13, I just reviewed this one about a month ago, which when I was a kid was one of my favorite ones, but not anymore. I got a little older, a little wiser maybe. My wife would probably argue with that. But at number 13, Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Um, a lot of poor choices were made in this film. It was a rush production. Mustafa Ka was trying to strike what iron was hot coming off the success of Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Between... Between killing Rachel off in the first 20 minutes very unceremoniously for a character everybody loved and fought so hard in part four to survive and save Jamie, making Jamie mute for most of the film, bringing Tina in to be the lead, taking over for Rachel. I don't like Don Shanks as Myers. The mask kind of sucks here as well. A bunch of characters that are just, eh. It's just not a good film. I can still watch it, but it's not. It's definitely, in my opinion, it's the second worst film of this franchise. So at number 13. Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. At number 12, now from here on up, I like all these films to varying degrees. Some of them aren't as good as the other ones, obviously, but at number 12, the one I just reviewed last week, Halloween 6, the, the theatrical cut of The Curse of Michael Myers. I have a lot of nostalgia for this film. It's the first Halloween film I got to see in the theaters with my friends opening night when it was released that year. It's a mess of a film for sure, and that's, it is due most in part of because of all the behind-the-scenes trouble between the between a cod and the Weinsteins. The Weinsteins taking the film away from a cod, going back to LA and doing a bunch of reshoots and not including them in it. And a lot of reshoots, this is the MTV version of, the, the theatrical cut anyways, the, the MTV version of Halloween. Although I still like it. I think it's very stylish. I think it's well shot. I love the way Myers looks here. George Wilbur coming back. He looks amazing. It's the best mask up until that point that we've had since the first two films. So those are all pluses. Plus the theatrical cut goes Bonzo on the gore. I like the theatrical cut. I can have fun with it. It's a mess narratively, especially towards the end. Some shit doesn't make sense. But at the end of the day, at number 12, Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, the theatrical cut. At number 11, I think it's slightly better, Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, the producer's cut. Now, this cut is more subdued. The, set, the score were in the theatrical cut. It's more rock kind of version of the Halloween, traditional Halloween score. This is more towards Carpenter's original themes and score from the original film. There's not as many, much gore. It's about 20 minutes of different footage. They go into the cult aspect more than they do in the theatrical cut. And they dispatch of Myers in a very different way, which I know is a little divisive. But it's a very interesting watch. So if you've never seen the producer's cut, check it out. But at number 11, Halloween 6, the producer's cut. At number 10, Rob Zombie's original, his first Halloween reboot. I enjoyed this film. I certainly have issues with it. I think Zombie was in a tough spot, plus he was messed with by the Weinsteins. There we go, mentioning them fuckers again. But they messed with Zombie on this as well. And in the second half of the film, is pretty much a Cliff's Notes version of Carpenter's original. I like Scout Taylor Compton as Laurie Strode. I like Daniel Harris coming back and being in this film. I think Brad Dorff is awesome as Sheriff Brackett. Tyler Maine is certainly our most intimidating Myers and most violent up until that point. Um, there's a lot to like here. There's also a lot to dislike, especially the beginning stuff with Ronnie and all that trashy dialogue. But at number, uh, number 10, ha Rob Zombie's original Halloween. At number nine, the brand new Halloween film, Halloween Ends. Right now, this is where this is going. My list has shuffled even the ones coming up. I shuffled around a little bit because I feel a little bit differently. I rewatched a bunch of them this year so far. 
But I think this is where End belongs, at least for me. I'm mixed on it still, but I did enjoy it to a certain extent. I got to see it again. It might move up on the rankings. It might move down. But right now, at number nine, the brand new one, the David Gordon Green's trilogy, Ender, Halloween Ends. At number eight, I'm going to go with Halloween H2O. I like Halloween H2O. When it came out in the theaters, it was a big deal. Jamie Lee Curtis was coming back to the franchise that she had not been in for 20 years. It was exciting. Um, it definitely gave us that finale when she chops Michael's head off. It's definitely a crowd pleaser. I remember the theater going nuts on opening night in a packed theater. It's a fun, short watch. It's it's competently made by Steve Miner. There's some cool kills. It's nothing outstanding, but it's a definitely a solid anniversary film. And bring in Jamie Lee's awesome here. Josh Hartnett's great here. I don't like the mask. I want I just reviewed this like a month and a half ago. The mask problems on this film were stuff of legend, and they, for some reason, with a budget like they had to have a mask that wasn't ready and kept changing masks is unbelievable. But yeah, right now, I think this moved up a little bit. But at number eight. Halloween H2O. Now, it's going to be a little controversial because I know some people don't really like this film, but Rob Zombie's H2. I like this one better than his original. I think there's a lot to like here. I like Liz Laurie's trying to cope with what happened, her PTSD, and I like how Annie is more of, like, she wants to stay home now where before she was an extrovert, now she's an introvert. And to see Laurie fall apart when she realized she's Michael's sister, I think Scott Taylor Compton gets a really good performance and Daniel Harris gets a really good performance there. And so does Brad Dorff when he finds his daughter dead. Um, there's a lot, I like a lot of stuff about this film. So yeah, at number seven, Rob Zombie's H2. At number six, Halloween Kills. This one moved up a little bit in my rankings since last year. But uh, I just rewatched this with my buddy Dale underscore from the Bat and Spider podcast at his house getting ready for Halloween Ends. And besides that section with that patient that drags the film to a halt for 10 minutes with the hospital shit, which is a waste of a scene and waste of being in here. There's a lot to like about this. So now Tommy Doyle, the evil dies and night shit gets old really fast and overplayed big time. But the kills, the violence, the mob mentality of the town, bringing legacy characters back, there's a lot to like here. That flashback to 78, I like all that stuff. So yeah, at number six, Halloween kills. At number five, this one jumped up a little bit. Halloween four, the return of Michael Myers. This was the, the palate cleanser to bring Myers back to the big screen after the middling success of Halloween 3. That movie did okay, but the fans hated it because they were expecting Michael Myers a lot like Halloween ends. But so Mustafa Akkad wanted to go back to basics, and that's what they did here, and they did it well. It's a solid Halloween entry, not my favorite, but it's damn solid, and it gave us George Wilbur's first crack at it at playing Michael Myers, and it gave us Jamie Lloyd as, you know, our new lead, and then Rachel as well. So we, you know, it was a good way to restart the Myers part of the franchise, and I've always enjoyed Halloween 4. So yeah, at number 5, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. At number 4, the original Halloween 2. I think this is a really strong sequel. It was a stroke of genius picking up moment, like right at the end of Halloween 1. I've always enjoyed it. Myers is like the, Michael Myers is like the Terminator here, and it, obviously Carpenter doesn't like, even though he wrote it, the fact that they made... Lori and Michael, brother and sister. Carpenter has said for years he hated that, but he had nowhere no he had no intentions for a sequel and he had nowhere to go with the story, so he just brought that up out. He pulled it out of his ass. They retcon now with Halloween 2018, but I still think Halloween 2 is a damn solid sequel to a classic original film. So yeah, and number four, the original, Halloween 2. At number three, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. I know Rich, this is going to piss you off because you hate this film. This is a film that I did not like for years. It took me a long time to get there, but I absolutely adore this film. It has so much charm. Tom Atkins kicks ass here. Daniel Hurley is the bad guy. F fucking awesome. Um, Stacey Nelkin is great here, playing off of Tom Atkins. It's a weird movie for sure, and it's a huge leap away from Myers because they thought they could make an anthology film every Halloween because they thought they killed Myers in Halloween 2. I, I like this film a lot, and I'm glad to see it's getting a little bit of a cult following now, and it's better received than it was years ago. Even myself, I love it now where I used to hate it. So yeah, number three, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. At number two, David Gordon Green's first crack at the Halloween franchise, Halloween 2018. I think this was the smart move. That they were going to try to reboot the franchise, just make a direct sequel to the original film. David Gordon Green does a great job with this one. I love Myers here. James Jude Courtney does a great job bringing Laurie back. 
yet again, but I think they make it a little bit different enough from H2O where it works here. The Sartain stuff comes out of nowhere. I, I agree it's a bizarre choice, but overall, I really like this film, and I think it's the second best Halloween film in the franchise. So at number two, Halloween 2018. At number one, in my opinion, the best, the classic, the masterpiece, John Carpenter's original 1978, Halloween. Simplicity, great camera work and great lighting by Dean, Dean Cundy and Carpenter working together closely. Jamie Lee Curtis is Laurie Stroh giving us our ultimate final girl. Um, she is the scream. She is the scream queen, Jamie Lee Curtis. What a great film! What more can I say about it? It's an absolute classic. Carpenter on a three hundred thousand dollar budget. Donald Pleasance playing Donald uh, Doctor Loomis. Stroke of genius. He's amazing in the role, and he went on to do many sequels. Uh, I just love this film. It's my favorite slasher film. It always has been. And it's probably never going to change from being my number one in any Halloween franchise ranking. So that number one, John Carpenter's original 1978 Halloween. That's it for my franchise ranking. What are you, what's your top five Halloween films? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Where would you put uh, Halloween ends in your ranking? Leave that comment down below. Let me know. I'll be interested to hear what your thoughts are on that. That's it for this video. I'll be back soon with the review for Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, and some other films coming up right before Halloween. But until next time, bye.